So our restrictions have eased a little bit in Melbourne. See, now we're able to leave the house for two hours instead of just one hour per day. Leaving the home still has to be done for one of the four primary reasons, shopping, like I just did, caregiving, medical reasons, exercise. Which has changed a little because previously we were only allowed to come out for exercise for one hour a day. But now, that's been increased to two hours a day. Face masks are still mandatory in public places. You don't need to wear them for strenuous exercise like cycling and running. I don't need to wear one right now. I'm choosing to though. Not just to protect everyone else, but to be honest, to protect me as well. have a curfew in place. Uh, it was 8 p.m. until 5 a.m. but yesterday that's changed so we can be out until 9 p.m. It doesn't really affect me but because the days are getting longer you can now stay out an extra hour but everyone's got to be home by nine o'clock or else you can get fined. It's something like a $1,500 fine. Not insignificant. Probably not going to fly again for another at least six weeks, but I'll talk to you more about that as time goes on. But one thing I do want to do is if we're going to be allowed to go out for two hours a day now, I really want to make the most of that. Maximise those two hours a day instead of sitting at home feeling sorry for myself, wishing I could get out and fly. Which is what I've been doing a lot of to be honest the last couple of months. One thing that hasn't changed then is sadly the five kilometre restriction. So you're not allowed to go further than five kilometres from your own home. That's not going to change until at least the end of October. And that's what I was saying before about probably not flying for another six weeks. Moorabbin Airport is more than five kilometres from my home. So the likelihood of me getting down and seeing Echo Yankee Zulu again anytime soon is slim to zero. You're taking your own photo. Trying to, yeah. And there's a bird attacking my drone up there as well. <laughs> the magpie's trying to get it down from the sky. Yeah, I'm just making a quick movie on my bike. As well as shopping and exercise today, I did want to talk to you about one more thing. And that's the video I made last week. And thank you for all the responses, by the way, on the fuel tank. So you may remember from that video that the original idea was to fly from Sokol in Russia to Anadir, a leg that was going to be 802 nautical miles. Then I also tried to add an alternate on top, which was this one up here, which meant an additional 346 nautical miles. It was all getting a bit too long and a bit too far for the tanks inside Echo Yankee Zulu. The question I put to you then was, would you do that trip without an extra fuel tank? So just based on the 90 gallons that Echo Yankee Zulu has, the overwhelming majority of you said no. And I'm kind of glad that you did. There's Lola. It was a present. Now, since making that video and getting all the responses from everybody, I actually went back to the company who's helping me with the clearances and handling in Russia. And I basically said to them, look, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get from Sokol to Anadir, is there anything else you can do for me? And they said, yes, there's actually an alternate routing which they gave me, which is gonna cut the legs down by a bit, not a lot, but by a bit. So let me put to you an alternate, would you do this flight through Russia 
kind of version two based on a slightly different routing. Routing, routing. So now the idea is gonna be going from UH, nope, UHSS to UHMA, meaning the top of Japan here, basically coming into Russia. And instead of then heading up in this direction and across, what we're gonna be doing is coming across this way to an airport down here called Kamchatka or UHPH. And then from, which means that first leg is only now 719 nautical miles. And then from Kamchatka, instead of going all the way to UHMA, which is 912, they've also found me another airport around about here called Manili or UHPN, which now breaks up the Russian leg into these one, two, three flights. The first of which is 719, the second one is 606, and the third of which is just 358. And the good thing about that longest leg of 700, nought, 700 and, is I have a really good alternate airport very close to my destination, Yelizovo. See, that's my destination airport and that's a good alternate airport. Now, one really important thing I wanna say though is thank you. I wouldn't have probably got to that point if it wouldn't have been for making that video and getting the comments that you gave me. A couple of you actually gave me specific examples of airports. I think one or two of those airports were mentioned in the comments before. So thanks. You've like really made it easy for me to get across Russia. Or, well, not I shouldn't say that. Made it easier than I thought it would be. There's not anymore going to be an 802 nautical mile monster leg with no alternate options. So yes, on behalf of me and Milkshake, Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being awesome and being part of this community. Okay, see you in the next one.